Welcome everyone to an off-season Big Ten Network chat. Pleased to be joined by John Beeline, currently the special advisor for player development for the Detroit Pistons, but for these purposes, a Hall of Famer. And not just one, but two. The College Basketball Hall of Fame and the Michigan Hall of Fame. Congratulations, John. Um, when you went from West Virginia to Michigan, uh, what were your expectations of what ultimately could occur? I, 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 what I hoped really, Andy, was that I could make it, that I wouldn't get fired. You know, I owed West Virginia a ton of money, and if I get fired, I couldn't pay for it. So I just was trying to survive. And hopefully at some point within that first five years, just make the NCAA tournament because they hadn't made it in so long. And that was it, survival. That was 100% of it. As you, we didn't have great uh, facilities, but the administration uh, got behind it all. And all of a sudden, you know, Michigan basketball was able to take off and be up at the top where it belongs and it still is. Two national championship games. Um, among many other unbelievable results, players that have gone on uh, to have really, really good NBA careers. Uh, even here now, a, uh, a world champion in Jordan Poole uh, with the Golden State Warriors. Um, it's hard to pick one highlight, a couple highlights, but what stands out the most for you during that Michigan uh, run that you had? I, I think it, it's at the end of the season, being in a position where, where the Big Ten tournament, we, we did win it twice. I think we were in the championship game four times, but we, you know, so you get to that point, all right, the tournament's over. And that was the ending point for Michigan for all those other years. And then all of a sudden, okay, what's next? And then your next thing you know, you're in the Sweet 16. Next thing you know, you're in the Final Four. I think those days that you were in March still playing basketball late, We'll always, there's not one moment. You guys, you got Trey Burke's shot. You got Jordan Poole's shot. You got all those things that people think about, but there's so much went into that. I think it was a, uh, just a, a, the, the feeling that you, you, you had the program in the right direction. It was, it, kids were graduating. It was clean. It was just a sense of, I think, achievement that uh, was very rewarding for my staff, for myself, I know for the administration, but most importantly for our players who bought into Bo Schembechler's, the team, the team, the team. You know, and I think, you know, your current role of player development, you know, there's maybe no greater developed player than Duncan Robinson, <laughs> who comes from Williams College, D3, to helping you guys compete for a national championship, to winning, you know, at the highest level with the Miami Heat. Uh, what did he symbolize in terms of that development for you? Yeah, I think it's something that, that, um, his four years with us, uh, because God forbid, Andy, he sat out a year and worked at his game and didn't, he went through the, didn't have a transfer portal, but he went, you asked Duncan Robinson, he'd probably say that year I sat out was so good for me in the long run. I think that's the point we're missing sometimes with the transfer portal. It's a good thing to sit out, get ready to graduate, double major, work at your game. Uh, most students, most students would take that in a heartbeat, another year of free Michigan education. But what he, his perseverance, what he learned from John Sanderson in the weight room of just improving his quickness, what he learned from our coaching staff and just working at skill level and shooting level at game speed every day, he just took right with him to the heat. And it wasn't something new when he got to the heat. They looked at him and said, this dude's a worker. He went there because to the heat, he could have won a lot of places because they work. That's who he is. It's persistence. It's resilience. You know, he started for us. He didn't start for us. He was sixth man of the year. It, he didn't care. He just wanted to win. And if all our student athletes had that attitude, boy, it, it'd even be a better game than it is today. I also think that at the University of Michigan, uh, you ended up being a tremendous bridge to the past, the Fab Five, and, and even beyond that, the 89 team, mm -hmm. um, to what we're seeing now with Juwan Howard coaching and your still involvement of, of being that resource. Um, how critical, when you look back at, you know, that role that you played of caring, you know, because there was some troubled times and you bridged the yeah. two eras and now it feels like the program is whole again and in a good place. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think there's, there's key pieces there that, that, 
you know, it, it's it's a family now without question. And and I know our staff and the administration, everything had a lot to do with that. And obviously Juwan, Juwan has helped as well now. But, I, you know, we just reached out to people and Tommy Amaker had started doing that too. You know, he put some jerseys up. He tried to get this, you know, this, this connected um, family culture at Michigan. And uh, we, we, I p- picked up where Tommy had left off, inviting people back, recognizing different teams. I mean, I remember playing golf with Rudy Tomjanovich like within the first two weeks or so that I was there. Uh, he and Steve Fishman and, 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 and Dan Fife. And it was like, I heard their, their part of the story. And then as the different players would come through, I could see that just how wonderful it was. I've become great friends with Paul Hireman and Mark Lozier, these guys that played in, in, the, in the late 70s. It goes all the way to that 89 team where, I mean, when, those all, when they all came back and Steve Fisher came back, those are big moments. Those were really big moments for us to get Steve back and, and all those guys on the team. We had those guys in a room, Andy, uh, with our team. I knew exactly why they won the championship in 89. That was one connected guy who cared, guys who cared about nothing but winning. And they, that, when they met with our team, all of a sudden, we, we, were, we, we went to the national championship game, or we were right on the verge of a national championship. They're just a tremendous group, and it's just it's going to keep going. I, 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 I don't think Michigan – one thing about the Big Ten, there's some programs that, that have been there forever, and they're not going away. And, and Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Michigan, Purdue, all these programs have been doing this, and teams will go up and down. I don't think Michigan will ever go down again. I think we're, we're at a point because of facilities and everything and support that the family is together, and we're just going to keep it going. And lastly, as I mentioned at the top, College Basketball Hall of Famer as well. Um, you know, you've had an unbelievable career at every stop. Every place you've been it has been better for your time there. As you look back at, the, at this career at each stop along the way, always being a head coach, uh, what, what do you think of most, uh, you know, when you think collectively of what you've accomplished? You know, I, I, and I started in like 78 at a, at a at the cow at the Erie Community College, you know, and I don't think anybody's ever done it. I'm not trying to applaud myself. I said it was the, you just you just did the job. And I think again we go back to survival, that you you take a job at Erie or Nazareth or Lemoyne, you got four little children, you know, and you're trying to just survive. Canisius at 10 and 18 the first year, you're just trying to survive. Uh, walked into a credible situation at Richmond where we won, but then we were starting over again. And obviously West Virginia, there's just this incremental um, level of experiences you get at each different school that helped you in the next one. And then you said, wow, I just learned that. And that helped you at West Virginia. Or that helped you at Michigan. So it's a, it's really a, a unique, unique journey. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because I just think it's, you got to be really lucky to have those situations. When you think about West Virginia, Dan Dockage Doc, takes the job and then he leaves. That's why I'm there. You know, Canisius is a whole different story, how I ended up there. Uh, you ask Tom Brennan that sometime. It, it's just like amazing luck along the way. And this means so much to me because college basketball is, is in the fabric of my life for so long, for really 45, 40, over 40 years. That's all I did was college family and college basketball. And to be inducted in this Hall of Fame is really special. Well, you've done a wonderful job at both, John. Uh, so happy for you. Uh, you know, I just think my adult life, my career, you know, you, you've been a head coach the whole time, obviously beyond <laughs> that too, but uh it's been an honor constantly to check in with you at each stop along the way. Congratulations again. Andy, I'll never forget the interviews we've had at the Final Four and all those things. I'm so at the Big Ten Network, as you know, I worked at it, is terrific. You're fabulous. What a great match. I, I hope you stay there forever. And uh, thank you so much. Congratulations, John. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Andy.